All right, and welcome back to our second matchup of the evening. This is another Nexus Gaming Series Heroic Division matchup. On the left-hand side, we're going to have Macro Trash, and on the right, we're going to have Ari and the Eight Bosses. To my right is going to, or maybe, I don't know, on screen right, either way, is going to be Dunkstick. How you doing? How was your break? I think I'm to your left, and it was great. <laughs> oh, that's, I'm I like, to me, like, the actual <laughs> monitor where you are is to my right, and I, when I do this, I'm like, yeah, it's the right direction, but everything is mirrored, so of course, I... I tried to get it so close. Um, but <laughs> how was your break? It's pretty good. Use the bathroom. It's a great break. You know, I got three water bottles here empty, so you know, gotta gotta make those fluids happen. You gotta stay hydrated. That's the big thing. Yeah, man. So let's we get into some, this. We get, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead actually, because I was about to actually. I was just gonna say we get we gave some advice on the podcast about us drinking water, and then I finished like two bottles of water on cam. <laughs> 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 Gotta stay hydrated. But either way, let's um let's get into this. And if you're watching this, don't hydrate. Go ahead and get yourself a beer. Uh Macro Trash hey, won hey, the hey. uh won the coin flip and they went ahead and banned out Infernal Shrines. Braxis holdout was then the map ban from Arya and the Yip bosses. Team of Spider Queen was then picked by Macro Trash, and then game two will be Towers of Doom as the Mayev is gonna be banned out by Arya and the Yip bosses. Not a bad ban to start this out. Yeah, and I also don't enjoy you skipping over the fact that I actually picked Towers of Doom. Excuse me, excuse me. Voice. Restart stream. Go back to the stream <laughs> starting page. Cancel draft. And that's actually yeah, because actually they did. They were like they were like dunk. Where are we going for game two? What was it? B O E Dang. or? Ooh. So, that's a really interesting ban. So, I've been told time and time again that there's a small delay on Tracer's blink, <laughs> and banning her out with that huge bug is actually. Kind of weird because that's like a really good hero if it wasn't for that bug. So, really, really interesting fan coming from the side of Macro Trash. For the bronze, um, Pog Chan. But first pick coming out, it is Tower, it is Tomb of Spider Wing. We are going to see the Medivh, such a good hero for poking people off of the turn ins as well as getting those teleports in and out for engages and disengages. Mem Avenger, really quickly, thank you for that bit donation. I do appreciate that. Um, and the other thing I do like with the Medivh at the start of this is the protect status and the uh, rotational effect you can get with the portals. But that's a strong start from the members of Macro Trash with that Diablo and Stukov. And I think you and I actually casted the game last week, if I'm not mistaken, where we saw Stu Manchu literally on the Diablo, on Tomb of Spider Queen, getting shadow charges into like Kael'thas and just absolutely destroying their health pool so quickly. That wasn't me. I'm sorry. Oh, I swore that was that game was with you because you did cover. You did you're cover. Cheating on me. Well, you're the only one I cheat on. Well, I'm cheating on you <laughs> with you then. <laughs> you admit it. You admit it. No. You cheat on me. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, we uh, see the Valkyrie and the Blaze pickup though. Really good healer, especially when you combo the Medivh protects. So like you have that sustain healer and then that kind of burst healer as mm -hmm. for because of the shields. And Blaze, the bunker, going to be really big to help protect against Duke of Silence or even the Apocalypse when it comes out. I actually really like this this draft on the side of Ari and the Yip bosses at the start of this. They've got a lot of good survivability. They've got a lot of utility on their side. It's, it's a strong start. But here's the thing. Looking at the draft, they're going to need wave clear. They're going to need a main tank. I don't think they're going to solo on just that Blaze. Uh, so at this point, if I was on the side of Macro Trash, I'd be looking to ban out one of those two things. And realistically, I kind of like the idea of maybe banning out. Oh no. I was like some sort of, do you focus the wave clear or the main tank? And I was just like, so confidently like wave clear. And I'm like, no, but what about the main tank? You don't want to maybe something that counters the Diablo. Hmm. So what do, what do you, I, give, I, give me your two cents. Yeah. <laughs> Lot of good wave clear, you know, Mativ Q's, Mafarian Moonfire. Mm. Blaze actually is a beast at clearing. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see them go something like a beefy, another beefy tank. Uh, Muradin, uh, ETC is available, maybe a Garrosh. That's and true, yeah. Follow it up with like a Genji, you know, oh. getting that, like high mobility uh, mm. assassin in there, especially when you're dealing with someone like Diablo or Stukov who um, either go in too far or, or stay in place. So, Really up to them. And real quick side note, if you read the initials going upwards on the right side, it does say BM. So I just want to point that out. Arya and the Yip Boss is BM, just officially on stream. Uh, <laughs> we are going to see a Hanzo fan, though. 
<laughs> this is gonna be Hanzo Ban coming out from the members of Macro Trash, and I like that the poke that comes out from Hanzo is really big here. Uh, I think the other factor too is the vision provided is great, and then we're gonna have a Jaina being banned out on the side of Ari and the Yip bosses. The same kind of thing. Like I think it combos well with the Diablo Stukov. Uh, the, it, it goes well into the wave clear. The the four member rotation that you will be getting between mid and bottom offers a lot, and it's a quick way for Diablo to get a lot more of those uh, black soul stones. But at the same time. I personally, on a map like this, and this is just my two cents casting, I really like the idea of a uh, Gul'dan. I think Gul'dan is phenomenal. The poison damage is really hard to deal with. There, I, I just, I personally think that's it's a great hero. And also, Horrify is a great separation tool. Gives a lot of good uh, opportunities for Diablo to go ahead and charge into one player. And then on top of that, maybe you then pick up your solo lane into that blaze and then flex on some extra damage. Because at this point, you know you're going to be having a solo lane into the blaze, so... Yeah, I would say maybe flex on some extra damage and then pick up like wave clear and your solo laner here. Yeah, most definitely, especially when you have a sustained healer. Stukov is really good about keeping the Gul'dan up. We are going to see the Orc and the Greymane um, mm -hmm. go for that burst. There still is the potential for the Gul'dan last pick, you know, just looking to pick up some really strong heroes. I the like Orc it. does a fantastic job in the offlane and Greymane being really good for bursting heroes mm -hmm. in the windows that are provided by Medivh. Um, and like you said, I'm going to top off, Horrify is amazing against oh, yeah. the D because if he gets his, his portal even though he puts the portal down it's almost instant entering it is not and he can actually get feared away from the entrance and that actually be a very big deal to stop him from getting away once that cooldown is on used the other thing to consider too is that leoric has some die potential with the diablo he's got some disengage like uh, both both you know leoric and Greymate have engages and disengages and i think they pair well into the diablo i think the synergy on the side of macro trash is really starting to build now this is the big thing that i'm curious of what Ari and the yip bosses will be grabbing what do they round out with their draft and i think that's really going to you know solidify their synergy that they're looking for right now in the four member rotation it's just supports essentially how long has tracer been bugged forever <laughs> <laughs> joanna for the oh, yeah. grouping i really like that actually Ooh, and then there's going to be the ghoul dan I, I like I really like this pickup on the side of Ari and the Yip bosses. I think it's it's a fortified composition. It's a hyper carry on that goal. It's a, it's a lot. I wouldn't say hyper carry, but it's a lot of uh, 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 pressure on the Gul'dan to to perform in this situation. But at this point, how do you respond to this? What do you take to kind of push this back and control the map a little bit more? They need a Genji. I I think Genji would actually be phenomenal here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so oh. good for diving on to the cooldown, forcing the cooldowns out of Malfurion Medivh. There's no real hard engage on think about? to the Genji right now. Uh, Blessed Shield's a little bit of a slow but animation. Um, Condemn is very easy to dodge. Blaze Charge is very easy to dodge. Maybe Twilight Dream or... Oh, oh actually, it'll be Phoenix. I was actually Still thinking... Still not a bad pick. I was thinking, I was like, well, they don't really have any poke damage. Well, th th not any poke damage, but they have not a whole lot of poke damage. I was actually thinking the Junkrat. I thought the separation and the vision that you could actually get between the rotations of the lanes with the uh, Concussion Mine as well as the Trap, I think I thought would be really beneficial for them, as well as continually poking out those turn-in phases. But I do like the Phoenix here. As we were discussing in the last matchup, this, I mean, it doesn't even, I mean, do we even need to talk about it? Like, Planet Cracker, obviously, right? Planet Cracker, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, though, I mean, like, who, who, looking at the two drafts, taking away the teams and who you know, who do you give this over to? I, I got to favor the left side a little more. I believe Leoric wins the solo lane, and if they decide to bring Leoric into the group, he still does decently well, because mm -hmm. Phoenix wins every solo lane. Uh, a lot of good self-sustain, you know, Diablo, Regen, Orb, Stukov, kills everybody. Leoric has good self-sustain. Phoenix has the shield. Greymane really being the only one that doesn't have um, very any, any ten defensive capabilities. But I think at any point, they do have the ability to kill any of the members of the side of Arya and the Apostles, especially post-13 when Stu Manchu gets his 13 talent for the percent burst. Was that a devastating um, charge, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, this... I think a lot of this game is going to be around how well Motri, or how fast Motri can get his stacks up for his passive, for his Q and how well, how slow they're able to make the fights play out because all of the burst potential and all of the playmaking capabilities are really going to be on the side of macro trash. They're, they're, they're trash at the macro, but their micro looks sick. So, <laughs> And this well, map is not a macro friendly map or not, a, a good Sorry. Uh, I was gonna, oh yeah, I was going to say, not, 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 
Not too much, but we're going to get into this. On the left-hand side, we're going to be having Macro Trash with Grim on the Gray Main. Uh, we'll be having Frank Jukes on that Leora getting their dance moves on. Uh, Spurbeck going to be on the uh, Stukov. Stu Manchu going to be on that Diablo. And Hedgy going to be on the Phoenix. And on the side of Arya and the Apostles, we have Arya, the queen of the team, on Malfurion. Twa on Joanna. Motri not on Tracer on Medivh. Yipos on Gul'dan. And Argy playing the Blades. All right, let's go ahead and get into this as we do have all five members on both sides pushing into mid. <laughs> just, just just like the, the the hype for the other team as well. I just I got to say that really quickly. I'm really excited about this matchup. Uh, but at this point, we start this out and it's just going to be mid lane clear. And then I'm assuming we're going to be seeing our solo lineers rotate off in the bottom for member rotation between mid and top. And never mind. Server? What? It's West. What? It's West. What'd you do? What stream? I literally checked it. Yeah, we can remake. We can remake. Remake. I don't know. I don't know why. Boo, <sighs> Muhammad. Boo. Fail. But it's literally set to central. I even checked it when we were. So I think I know what happened. And it's actually probably my fault. So if you remember, when we first started, I invited you, and I'm always set to West. And it probably wouldn't let you change it. But it's your fault, because you were the captain at the time, and I'm taking no pity on you. <laughs> Alright, let me get you let me get you in this party here. <laughs> Let's get these guys. <laughs> I can't handle you. Alright, uh No, uh, we're just gonna get this set up really quickly. Uh did you change yourself over? Central? You, yeah, you're set to central. If you want to just... just Alright, I guess I can be central. Uh, oh, we don't need draft. We don't need draft. We don't can need draft. Like a can play like a peasant for once. Uh, let's get... Where's Argy? Oh, there you go. You got him. I hit him. Oh. I hit him good. Alright, let's I get back too. into this. <laughs> Man, I'm surprised Motri stays on my friends list with the amount of shit talk I go through. <laughs> okay, all right, we are gonna we're gonna get back into this, guys, in just a second. Really quickly, uh, if you are enjoying the stream, please go ahead and hit that follow button. And uh, while we have this time, if you have been enjoying the 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 co-casting, the beautiful co-casting of the beautiful Dunkstick, please go ahead and follow him on social media: Twitch, Facebook, Tinder. Where else can people find you? Whoa, LinkedIn? Tinder. How did you know? Okay, Cupid. Uh, 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 I would have started with Grinder because it would have been funny. <laughs> so. I'm just saying. Let me just let me just make this note. Okay, next time, start <laughs> with Grinder. You know, I'm gonna be honest here. I got off work a little early, and I was like, you know, I wonder if I should grab some beers and be like, Muhammad, we're gonna drink this whole stream. And then I told myself the hangover isn't worth it, mm -mm. but this weekend, dorms, the hangover is going to be worth it. The hangover is going to be real this weekend. West Coast, Best Coast, <laughs> East Coast fam. What is what is happening? We have people in and out of lobby. Oh, okay. <laughs> God, he's he, in got, chat. He's like, he's just, casual and, and now it's chat, just, you know? yeah, like, of course, of course, he's just going to be. All right, let's um, right, let's start game here. Um, we'll get the R's ready. Make sure all the heroes are the same. No one's yeah. cheating. Okay. Everybody's cheating here. Everyone is... Okay, ready from one team. Uh, right, I really don't... I, C as well. Yeah, I don't want to take C, but I guess I guess we'll, we'll take C, and then we're going to get going here into game, game sure. number one. I almost went into... I was just like, game two, because... No, 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 no. Uh... <laughs> So hopefully we have no server issues. This actually happened. It is game number two. <laughs> the casters won game one. Yes. Um, Take it on my point today, boys. <laughs> but uh, uh, I did have this problem once before, and uh, we thought it was the co-caster. We reset both player, and then we actually had to have one member. We're still on West. We're still on West. I can't type. Yep. 
All right. Uh, I think this time what we're going to do is we're just going to have to have one of the te- – I had this happen to me actually in the Nexus Gaming Series final for like season two. Jay Zahn and I were casting together and I – I'm going to restart my whole heroes. Okay. You're going to restart your client. Because it, it could be possibly my fault. I don't believe so because Bahamut was host both times. But just in case. I don't know why, but yeah, there's there's a there's a weird bug sometimes where I've actually had we had to have someone who was on the on the East Coast just make the make the game. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Did you have did you already have one of them make the game? Um I don't know, we ended up just giving them crown, I think. I can't remember. Um no, so I mean, right just, now. Oh, oh. Like lobby. oh, I I made the lobby. Oh, dunk stick, there you are. Make observer. Ref. You know, wake referee. We so for those of you in chat, rim. don't forget, follow myself. Twitch, Twitter, not Facebook, I'm not there. Instagram, not there either. Um, not on Grindr. Uh, maybe on Bond stream whenever he starts streaming. But don't forget, if you have your free Twitch Prime, go ahead and sub to my channel. I mean, you can sub to Bahamut's too, but you pay for his. Use your Twitch Prime on me. <laughs> He's worth it. I'm not. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you're definitely worth it. You're definitely worth it. All right, don't sell yourself. Even though I just binged Westworld doesn't mean I want to be on West. Okay, we got an R out from one team. Uh, R out from the other. All right, ready. We just need one last player to get ready. I think that's just the Stu Man Shoe. It's Stu Man Shoe. Yeah. All right, guys, the Clown Fiesta is almost over. Definitely third time the charm. We are going to be on Central server. Both these teams want Central. It's, West Coast, Best Coast. It's just, it keeps pulling us to the correct server. I don't know why. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I just, I keep like, I have a fear of like pulling it away from this current scene where it's just us two talking. Because if I'm like, we'll go into the game and it's just going to be on West Coast again. But we're actually going to pull it away from, from this scene here. Let's get going into this because they are already loading in really quickly. Central server, let's get into this. On the left-hand side, we are going to be having Macro Trash with Frank Jukes on the uh, Leoric. Hedgy going to be on that Phoenix. Grim going to be on the Greymane. Mane. Spurbeck going to be on the Stukov. And Stu Manchu going to round it out on the Diablo. And once again, on the red side, Arya and the Yip Bosses. Arya being featured on the Malfurion, Yip Boss on Gul'dan, Twa on Johanna, Argy on Blaze, and unlike normal, Motri not on Tracer. He is on Medivh today. Well, let's get For those of you that don't know, Motri is a Tracer one trick. Oh. The best Tracer one trick, maybe on the East Coast. <laughs> Ooh, maybe on the East Coast? Not even definitively on the East Coast, but we actually have... A little bit of a of a change in rotation here as it looks like they're going to be going in on Stu Manchu right away. Just some poke damage between these two teams as the uh, the first waves will be crashing here. Also trying to stack up some of those talents. We do have the Mediv baseline questing for that Arcane Rift already sitting at three stacks. As well as the Gul'dan going to be working on the Corruption stacks getting up to 40 and definitely going to be doing some damage over time. Yeah, and Frank Juke's just doing what he can to piss off Argy and interrupts his uh, mounting. I don't know about you, but whenever I get dismounted, I get, I'm like, BM, BM in chat, BM. <laughs> I will Twa say that's actually really far forward. You gotta get the root onto Diablo. He's gonna get knocked back, protected coming out, the unstoppable. It's it's too oh, silly to try and think you can kill Johanna this early. It is, it is really terrifying. To actually, to, even then, like, even, but then if you do get that kill, it's just like, whoa, they just got a kill into Joanna this early. But on the note of actually that dismounting, I was playing Genji before this, and I was just being, like, I was just running around just, like, dismounting people. I was just like, this is so much fun. Like, <laughs> you, you're slow. Confirmed your rotations on stream. Are so slow. is BM. Confirmed <laughs> on stream. Confirmed. Um, okay. but, I talked about it a little bit in the draft screen. Mm -hmm. Motri stacking his passive is going to be a big deal in this game. 17 at 1 minute and 30 seconds. That oh, and, and working up even further than that, as it looks like we do have Stu Manchu taking a few of these. Going to be trying to get onto that Stuka, but it's not, or not onto the uh, Medivh there, but it's not going to be working out as that portal will come right through for the save. No uh, lurking arm to deny it as Hedgy taking so much poison damage. Going to have to tap well. Rotations coming up from Ari and the Ip Bosses. I would say a little bit quicker, but at the same time, experience is fair for both teams, and it really hasn't been going over in either either way. Yeah, definitely in the favor for Arya for their wave clear. Johanna Gul'dan is some of the fastest clear you'll ever see. 
Uh, Yip Boss actually going very low. Needs to find some time to go ahead and drain life, get his health back up. Murphy, not really the best healer to keep him up because he needs to be able to poke him. And with their rotations, they're not really finding that opportunity to get off the Moonfire poke. I just, this this continued poke throughout these rotations, I love the way that Yipos is playing the uh, the Gul'dan in this situation. A little bit on that low side, but as you were saying, but going to get some healing from Malfurion as well as getting some of that drain. Uh, just draining some of that life. Uh, really quickly, just peeking at some of these these questing talents here. Medif sitting at 30 out of the 40 necessary stacks at sub three minutes into this game. So definitely doing some work, getting the angles on those arcane rifts as it looks like Twa a little far forward, but that Joanna has the protection status as well as the iron skin and also portals to just maneuver around. Not gonna be a problem as actually Yipos gonna be grabbed here by the Diablo. No follow-up charge going to be found. We do have Grim trying to dive in, but that will be the health being drained. Stu Manchu so very low, just under 200 health. Looks like they are able to get the Diablo out without losing them here. And that is going to be just another back and forth between these two while they actually have the solo laners come up into mid for the pickup on experience. That is a three minutes and four second arcane rift stack. That is probably the fastest I have ever so seen him quick. stack that talent. And that's huge because he can no longer lose the stacks, which means from now at three minutes onward, Madiva is going to be pumping out the damage. And you, and you can see it right now, already at 10k, far surpassing his assassin. Um, that's going to be absolutely huge in these later fights. Diablo actually picking on Argy. He's going to get slowed by the Leoric. Going to get flipped. The portal not really going to be there. And actually going to follow it. Jupes actually taking a lot of damage. Motri once again doing so much with his portals, with his Arcane Rift. Um, actually going to make the both soul is actually stepping away. Argy actually going to go ahead and get his top turn in. He's just going to clear up top. Just letting Hedgy beat on him. Doesn't even care. Just going for that quick quick uh, grab on the, on the region low. That's that's big for them to get those 12 gems in. That definitely offers up quite a bit. Now they only need to get uh, 9 in, and, and Taw is going to be doing the exact thing that they need to do. But Spurbeck going to be poking out here and there. Had you going to get that splash damage out? Overall, they're going to be trying to deny this turn in the entire time. Meanwhile, though, really quickly in bottom lane, we have the Medivh Ooh. getting out with just about 100 health. Huge play is actually Hedgy going to go ahead and get that blink out. Argy not going to get the uh, a stun off of the jet propulsion there, but that Mediv getting out with just a sliver of health. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Did not have his shield any longer. Stu Manchu driving in, grabbing the Yip Boss, not going to get the flip on him. Yip Boss barely stepping away. Oh, flip, flip actually comes out. He is stuck. The deck comes through. He does get quite a bit of healing right there. Going to go ahead and take the portal. Walk away. Stu Manchu living with a quarter of his HP. So many souls. And he has the soul shield for the spell damage. Spell reduction. He's a very tanky uh, demon. And it's only going to get more and more powerful as they only need 14 more stacks. Uh, just peeking down to the bottom lane, it looks like Frank Dukes will be clearing out against Argy. Stu Manchu working on that mid lane, but... Uh, Mokri not going to be allowing that to be an easy thing, but top lane, this is where they're going to be trying to push in quite a bit. This is the boss lane. They definitely want to open this up as quickly as possible, but the members of Macro Trash are trying to make quick work of this uh, Web Weaver as Grim going to go ahead and just dive in, get that clear, and just back right off. Yeah, and it is important for Gul'dan to always be in the lane with the most heroes. He is stacking that Corruption talent, wants to hit 40 before 16, so when he gets the upgrade talent at 16 for more damage, he can be very effective. Uh, Motri actually just poking out here in the mid lane. They did look like they get the blue wall. No towers. And Blaze not really getting any work done. Like I said in the draft, Leoric is very handy for defeating a Blaze in lane. And I also really do like into the Blaze, the wave clear from the Leoric is, is I do think, a, a lot quicker. And you can already see that as there is a little bit of a brawl happening over this turn. And Yip Boss going to get dove on, but Grim in a really bad spot going to be falling at this time. Stu Manchu not going to be doing so well themselves as it looks like that will be Diablo falling. Gem's going to be at this point, uh, just they're, they're trying to delay any sort of pickup on the gems. They only lose one on the side of... Uh, Macro Trash is just diving in, trying to get some extra damage on the Frank Jukes there. And I really hope someone goes back and clips that team fight. Arya threw down the roots to help protect the Gul'dan, and they spread just enough mid-fight to prevent Diablo from pinning Gul'dan against the wall and finishing his life. Excellent play by Arya and the bosses. Their healer doing work. I, you could say I'm rooting for her. You could say that. Oh, God, the pun. The pun. <laughs> 
Mm. <laughs> it is going to be a blue side turn in. Uh, heroics yes. are available for Arya and the Apostles. Uh, we are seeing the Horrify, the Twilight, Blessed Shield, the Bunker Drop. Badeep actually oh. holding on to his talent. Rut row. Oh, and that is L A N A C T C R A C K E R. Planet Cracker. That is a Planet Cracker. Uh, you threw off my crew. <laughs> Looks like we're actually gonna be losing the uh, the hedgy the hedgy right there the phoenix at this time. Uh, there was the horrify that I was actually <laughs> three two three. Uh, there is gonna be that horrify that went off at, at the last second there that also denied the uh, the blink out by the phoenix. So at this point, I think this is going to, we're gonna be seeing a dead phoenix here in just a second, as it looks like we're gonna have to wait for the uh, for the one member to get back here in just a second. Uh, we actually get the R's out from both teams, and let's get back into this. They're ready to get going. And we're back to it. Phoenix actually going to get out. The teleport was not interrupted. Corruption does not quite make it. Twa actually going to go around, has the Blessed Shield, does not actually have the Blessed Shield. He's trying to get oh. the condemned, the cleanse, not saving it. They're trying to do what they can. The teleport is there just to get Johanna out. He's doing as much damage as he can. Hedgy has no shield. He's just running around like crazy, but he did get his move speed back up. Motri actually taking oh, a lot of damage. The shield show. actually going to do a lot to heal him out. Twilight Dream coming out. Diablo falling low. Twa stuck in the slow. Hedgy now feeling hot. Oh my god, Malfurion is going to drop. The Unstoppable is going to be there. It is going to fall pretty quickly. That is going to be a four for none. That was a crazy good turnaround i actually thought that the uh the blink went on 100 percent cooldown didn't realize that it was off it right away so they went ahead and got that blink right out they also got that kill onto the onto yip boss so early into that fight i, I missed that one that was happening because i was just following uh hedgy around it just just like it was kind of like the benny hill music just playing in the background as they were just chasing them around with that with the medivh and joanna but uh they got that pick onto yip boss so early and that really turned the fight so much in favor for the members of uh, Macro Trash, they're actually going to be going ahead and getting another turn in here. Looks like Medivh just scouting this out. Gonna delay it out a couple seconds as they only need three more on the side of Macro Trash. Ball going in for a little bit of a fight. Blink going to be coming out from the Phoenix at this time. Blessed Shield connecting onto a few. The Horrify will be connecting on to Spurbeck, and that will be a dead Stukov. Massive shove coming out for now, but that will be the kill. Yeah, really good pick. And a couple ults to use, but like I've said before many times, even if you get one kill, those ultimates are worth it because the map pressure of having one extra body, especially when you're very healthy, is worth more than having your ultimates off cooldown. Um, no, that team fight was absolutely monstrous for the side of Macro Trash. I've said it many times before in many other casts, diving past a fort for a greedy kill, it does not scream... We are trying to win this. We, Apocalypse. oh, the flip coming in. Oh, wow, the Condemn actually stopping the flip. Curse and Bullet actually going to be completely negated. Oh, my God. The Entomb comes out as well as the Planet Cracker at this time. They don't get Yip Boss because there was the uh, the portal out from the Medivh at that time. The Massive Shove will come out pushing Medivh back away, but they got that kill so very early on to Leoric. Now they will still be on the battlefield with the uh, Leoric trait as they actually get the poke onto Phoenix from the Medivh. They're going to start to dive onto Stu Manchu, and that will be Diablo falling. Not enough souls to bring them right back. Hedgy going to go ahead and pick up the missing gems needed, but that is a great play by the members of Arya and the Yip Bosses, as it looks like they're going to go ahead and turn in and get a Web Weaver phase of their own. So, Planet Cracker was used there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, no one in the Entomb to really get hit by it. So it kind of just sat there while the team just kind of beat on the rest of his team. Um, definitely going to be a very strong win for Arya and the Yip Bosses right there. Still down to the forts, but they do have the turn in now. Lanes are all right in the middle. Uh, Gul'dan actually pushing them onto the building. Going to make sure those top, uh, that top Spider Queen does come out right on top of the fort. Actually, completely uncontested up here. He's going to go ahead and take that. that uh, I can't even think of the name of it right now. The, the wow, healing. Help me out. The healing well. <laughs> he'll be able to take that out. And actually, uh, they, they pressure up this lane really, really well for this Web Weaver, as you know. And I, I absolutely love that play. That's actually going to be the Blessed Shield coming out as well. Dunk, do they get any sort of value here? No, it, they have used a lot. They use the Blessed Shield cooldown. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, actually, this is going to be a 5v4 up here. Leork is still mid. The Corruption going wide. He does have the talents. The Wow, the, the massive shove sending Gul'dan back downtown. Absolutely huge. That could have been a four-man horrify 
which could have been disastrous with a Twilight Dream or a Polybomb follow-up. But I do like it. They, they just, they completely were just like, nope, we don't want to deal with this as Frank Dukes is going to go ahead and try and rotate out. They get the portal through, but that will be the Wraithwalk already popping out. Going to go ahead and get the Spectral Leash that is also going to go ahead and be the Polybomb out on Frank Jukes. But they go ahead, move on to mid fort, push themselves closer to 16, and Ari and the It Bosses are starting to get a controlling, or starting to get a lot of control on this map and a lot of momentum in their favor by opening it up this much. Yeah, and Madiv doing this, this invulnerable ward thing where he just walks up gives total view they never have to worry about being caught off guard because as long as Madiv is just following the bulk of the team especially Stu Manchu Stu Manchu is probably the most important target to follow because at any time he gets that combo off the Q into the wall that's it's just disastrous for any target he hits so really important for him to just kind of constantly follow them around um make sure that no point are they getting flanked by this tank that's very capable of bursting anybody yeah, at this point, they're just going to be scouted out the entire time. You, you said it perfectly. I mean, just making sure that they have 100% vision on Stu Manchu this entire time. And it's just like, like glue, won't even just, even even the rotations back and forth up and down the lane. Uh, but overall, I got to say, at this time, this is some, they're starting to force the members of Macro Trash to turtle up a little bit here. They're not allowing them to get the turn-ins that they're looking for. You can consistently see one member scouting out the uh, the top. And uh, also, you know, bottom is going to be turned in by a uh, there just getting a little bit extra in the bank not enough for a turn as they do need 51 gems but denying these uh these next three to be turned in by the members of macro trash is huge doesn't allow them to get that kind of pause in momentum uh, you know it doesn't allow them to get any sort of control back on the map as they're just being forced into their lanes so very hard here yeah and they do have boss available they're trying to put some pressure on the map trying to make a play for it um they are going to go ahead and start rotating in on the mid lane uh, Stu Manchu is a little far out, thinking about maybe killing him. He does have full stacks of his Soul Stone. If they're able to clear it before any events, that would be absolutely monstrous because he would get the res, but he would come out and be really squishy. Gul'dan actually gonna get pumped into the wall. The Protect does a lot to protect the damage. Planet Cracker coming out, melting him so much damage. Twa taking a lot of damage. Lior gonna fall. Stu Manchu trying to walk away. Twa is actually very tanky, very difficult to deal with. Stu Manchu actually getting the flip onto Argy. Gonna get the bunker out. Argy stuck, does get the stun. The portal is there, protects. And that is the Medivh making the escape happen. The root comes out, but Furion is hit. Stu Manchu keeps going. Motri slowed. That is gonna be Polybomb coming out. It is gonna spread onto Hedgy. No massive shove. Wow, the range for Grim coming in on it. Taking down Medivh. And this will be a boss call. Leoric about to come back up. That is a huge play for the members of Macro Trash. That is exactly what they need to, to get the speed back in their favor at this point. I mean, it's just going to be the Blaze and the Joanna up at this time. Blaze is going to be trying to push in bottom as best they can. Just create pressure. They don't want to allow any of the Web Weavers to descend, you know, far down that lane. So they're not going to let it stack up at all. Twa just going to be scouting this out. I, they don't have Horrify for the next 20 seconds. Gul'dan will be rotating in, but it's not even going to be quick enough as that will be the boss grab. Wouldn't be too su surprised to see them exactly do this. They're going to be stacking this turn in. And actually, Twa not going to be able to delay that out in time. And so they get Web Weavers stacked up with the boss pushing down this top lane. They're looking for quite a big push here as this will be 15 minute boss as well as the 15 minute Web Weavers. And they have four members pushing into top while Leoric goes ahead and soaks up bottom pushing them closer for that 20. Dunk, this is, this is, I wouldn't say do or die. This I don't think can be game ending, but it's a little risky at this time. No, and they, they need to clear out this boss ASAP. They want it dead before to the Spider Queen lands. Having two boss units pushing down on your top keep is disastrous. I've been told time and time again, knocking down a keep is one of the hardest things on this map oh, because yeah. of how easy it is to defend the keeps. And it looks like Twa actually going to go in with the portal move pretty far past. Juke's taking a lot of damage in the front line. Are you going to go in and back up? The Planet Cracker coming through. Actually, the bunker getting people out of the wall. Interrupted by Twa. A lot of damage out on the back line. Polybomb is out. Not going to get to spread. A lot of people stuck in the AoE. The portal is there. The AoE shield's coming out. Yip Boss falling awfully low. The heals are still there. Argy getting this done. Phoenix falls. The Polybomb is back up. Stu Manchu is falling down. He does have a reset. Argy is not done yet. He is chasing them down. The portals are there. Moving in. Grim is in human form. He is not very slippery. Leoric trying to do what he can to stay alive a little bit longer. Uh, gonna go ahead and just be play very slippery. Argy can't quite see the... He's very low. Stu Manchu... <laughs> 
gets the kill! The turnaround! Gonna fall, but that is entirely worth him taking someone down with him. Staggering his death, but he does get up a lot faster than anyone else in the game. Frank Jukes dropping 16 of those gems, but just turning around going, Oh, I have an auto attack, and then just hitting Argy in the face with the mace. Oh. That poor, poor plays, but I just, I wasn't expecting it. I was like, I don't think that, that one auto won't be enough. And I do apologize as Gul'dan will be uh, picked off in lane there. I, what, what did I miss? How did they grab one member like that so quickly? Oh. Huh. Yeah, no, it's absolutely disastrous to get caught by Stu Manchu. And I said it before, that 16 combo, he has his 13 stacked, or almost stacked. That is so much damage and someone squishy like a Gul'dan cannot deal with that first they're actually moving up the it bosses are not responding to this they have a free keep they're looking at it Madiv is just sitting down here overlooking aria knowing full well there are four people up there they're gonna go ahead and take a keep for free completely uncontested despite it being an even four man yeah i, I they were going for the turn at that time but I, maybe a little bit of a miscommunication on on the timing of that but yeah they give over the keep i mean it was it was about it was 20s to 19 so I, I I don't know. It it would have been maybe risky to to play into it, but it also was the guaranteed turn in. The thing is though, the waves are so far pushed back. Like at this point, the the web weavers are going to be sending almost at the keep front gates for all three lanes. Uh, a fort in the bottom, but even then, it's it's bottom is probably a well protected lane for the members of Macro Trash and slows down the momentum. But it definitely uh, we'll see how this this plays out as Twa goes ahead and gets a little bit of a flank here on a Stu Manchu. Yeah, actually doing a lot of damage. Diablo going very low. Argy gonna go ahead and pop the bunker. Three-man root comes out. Planet Cracker melting the back line. Look at them drop. It can destroy worlds. It can destroy your team. Argy going very low. Gonna go ahead and slide out. Johanna just being this massive tank. Gonna go ahead and fall as well. Alpha Killer doing so much damage from this organ. The root's not gonna be able to save her life. Silence coming out. Stu Manchu gonna end it. That is an open top lane. Do they go to end the game? Bahamut. It uh, looks at this point they're already making the quick rotation. They were going to go top, but they just go, you know what? Take the damage from the keep, keep rotating past, and that's exactly what they're going to do. They want to end this, and they want to end it fast. Now, Web Weavers are descending down all the lanes. They've kind of cleared themselves out. Steam Manchu will need to uh, take the, the brunt of all this damage, but you can already see they're burning down the shield quickly. Argy's going to try and defend this as best they can. They get the root out. That will be the massive shove, I think, coming out from the Stukov. I heard, I heard the noise for it. Core starting to fall. We have Arya going to get shadow charged and just get flipped around by Stu Manchu. Taking quite a bit of damage, so the Pustule will be spread around. And I think this is going to be game number one. Ooh, actually, they lose the Diablo, but that will be game number one going over to Macro Trash. GG, well played. We're going to be going to Towers of Doom. On the left side, we're going to be having Macro Trash. And on the right, we're going to have Arya and the Yip bosses. Really quickly, though, just... I don't just... understand why you keep calling the other team trash. It's just weird. Yes, I mean, you know, that's... When you get to know a team, you just you just start to call them by pet names and, <laughs> um, but actually, so, huh? So we did see that Macro Trash banned Tracer first off last mm -hmm. game. It is a target ban. Motri is considered one of the best, better Tracer players in North America, and he tends to be a one trick on it. This happens to also be a very good map mm -hmm. for a hero that is very slippery like Tracer. So really interested to see if they decide to keep going with that targeted ban. Um, he did play a phenomenal Medivh, and look at that. Yep. Everyone knows how good Medivh is on this map, and they're like, no, 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 no. He stacked it at three minutes and four seconds. We don't want to deal with I that again. I think we can deal with a Tracer. Unless they pick it. They could pick it right now. Sorry, I'm just making a note, actually, for for the uh, for our interviews here, but that... Oh, there it is! Wait. Oh. No, I put the teams on the correct side, and I'm like, okay, so it looks like, yeah, actually, Macro Trash will be first picking the Tracer here. Macro Trash is going to be... not sure which teams were on which side. Because <laughs> actually, like, I had a small panic attack. I'm like, wait, did I set the teams wrong here? No, but I think that's actually going to be Macro Trash grabbing the Tracer first pick. Yeah, and it's really okay. common to pick up Malfurion with the Tracer, mm -hmm. so we may see them ban it, but I do really like Stukov against Tracer, so... Kind of tit for tat, what you want to do with it. Um, roots are very good for her to make, forcing her to recall. Twilight Dream can actually ruin her altogether. Um, and once again, denying the Malfurion from her. She can be miles away and then with a regrowth on her, and Moonfire just keeps on healing her. So, could be a very good pickup. Uh, really interesting if they want to go ahead and take up the Diablo as well. 
it was a very strong pick for Stu Manchu on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Mm -hmm. It looks like they'll be going ahead and grabbing that Jaina Malfurion combination. So definitely taking the Malfurion off the table. And I do believe Arya played it last game. Uh, if I'm also not mistaken, the Jaina was banned out, I think. Actually, in chat, Argy, I, I wrote, quickly wrote, is that you, E. Kevin? Is that you, Kevin? Because that is a very common pick for King's Gambit, E. Kevin. And I know Argy's a big fan of the brothers. Oh, yeah. And actually, right afterwards, he wrote, we King's Gambit now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, well, do, do I need to update stream, st stream labels and stuff? I mean, we got we got a stream title we got to change. We got a, we got a team name we got to change. Uh, but I do like this Jaina Malfurion start here. The, the poke damage out from Jaina is really, really powerful. Malfurion, I think the roots, the setup, as well as the poke damage from Malfurion are huge there. The Innervate uh, goes well with the Jaina. But once again, I mean, I personally think you go ahead and you grab that Diablo Stukov. I think it was a huge asset for the members of uh, Macro Trash, and I personally would like to see it in this game. Oh, <gasps> boy! Stay a while, listen, boys. It's Deckard Kane. Let's go. Oh, boy. Don't see a lot of that hero anymore. I like the dive out from Anubarak. I think the spell armor is really beneficial as well. The engage disengage can be really powerful too. I think with the tracer is kind of it, it pairs well with the trainer tracer. There's you know the recall. So if Anubarak goes in hard, then you can it tracer recalls. If you save your burrow, you can definitely use utilize that as a disengage. So I think so far the synergy for macro trash is really powerful. Curious to see what we're going to be getting in this ban phase though. They only have the Jaina Malfurion on the side of Arya and the It Bosses and the Tracer, Deckard, and Anubrak. They're going to need, I think, some poke damage as well as a solo laner at this time. So I think those might be the kind of the targets in this area. What, what do you think here? Yeah, definitely want to move towards banning some of uh, the other DPS, I would, I would say. Maybe banning a global here, making oh, sure that macro trash doesn't have that macro play. Um, honestly, Chromie is actually probably a really good ban here. Um, Deckard is actually really good at peeling for Chromie on top of it being like this huge poke champion for them to utilize, and Tracer just runs in and balls up, especially considering Malfurion does not have a cleanse. The other thing, um, the other thing to consider, too, is that Deckard has a stun a new, and a slow. Uh, a Nubrak has like everything in his kit is essentially a stun, so that's so much setup for the, for the, uh, for the Chromie as well, and then Tracer's just sitting there hitting you with auto attack damage. So yeah, you are completely right. I think that that synergizes well. There's a lot of setup for Macro Trash. I like the heads up ban, but they're going to be taking Argy's Blaze out. So I would say, I'm going to say two target bans here. Let's just let's just say that, even though Blaze well, is extremely powerful here too. I will say it is, it is somewhat of a target ban. Argy does really like playing Blaze, but Blaze is very useful against Tracer mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you can drop the bunker and whoever has the bomb can get inside to avoid being damaged by it. It's actually a very big deal when we're looking at a uh, possibility of just a Tracer and one other DPS. Um, Do you think that Macro Trash might solo lane with a Malthiel here, Last Rites? Taking out the Bunker uh, also denies that too? It is a possibility. Um, since Blaze is gone, they could they could uh, go to Malthiel. Um, I don't like it for the side of Arya and the bosses just because Tracer can actually solo... Malthiel all game long in his own lane. Mm -hmm. So that's a really rough matchup for her. Uh, we are going to see the Hanzo, though. A lot of poke damage, and Joanna going to be this blind, going to pretty much just stick next to his carries and make sure that Tracer is not getting any free damage on them. Yeah, but I actually... No real I, hard engage. I like the Joanna. He has, has a lot of poke damage at this point, you're right. And it's going to be a slow play, I think, from Arya and the It Bosses. Uh, definitely a control comp from on the side of them. They're, they're going to just delay these out as long as possible. Oh man, no, I just this. sorry. I just it thought is... I just thought of something by saying that they say, you know delay it out as long as possible. Do we get an Abathur from Arya and the It Bosses? Ooh, I know that I, is a possibility. I'm, we're talking opposite sides of the draft, but let's yeah, let's get over to Macro Trash here. What do you think that they're going to be rounding out the draft with here? Um, I think they're going to pick up another tank. A new Brack is very good for his CC. He does a lot of damage, but I don't think he is very good in a situation where he's dealing with two backline and he can melt from a distance mm -hmm. pretty easily. Um, Probably going to see either a Diablo or a Dahaka, Ooh. and there's Dahaka. Um, I like the Dahaka you know, mention the global. Sense, you know, looking for something that has a little more burst or reset ability and the AoE clear. Thrall, actually, interesting pickup by Arya and the Bosses. A lot of good poke. Um, I've seen a lot of, spoiler alert, uh, 
Argy Thrall, and actually there he is. I can actually see who's picked who. Now oh, for same, once. yeah. <laughs> is that an update to the spectator? I think it's an update. Um, I think spectators have always seen it once it locks, but uh, yeah, no, it's before. I don't think it actually said player ones and stuff like that. Like once we actually had the draft UI and everything. Well, let's get into yeah, this. Yeah, so Argy actually likes to go echo of the elements in the offlane and I've then take seen... the 16 talent mm -hmm. and i've seen it do a lot of work to disrupt enemy teams when you get that like that slow at 16 it becomes a pretty powerful talent well actually just just to note like even in a different division uh uh, uh stark on the team gilly sharks uh i've seen him play a ton of thrall in the games that i've casted and actually that is a common thing that i even asked him in a uh, interview because there was actually two different maps he played thrall played crash lightning one played echoed elements the other and talked about the differences about, you know, Echoed Elements for the solo lane is extremely powerful. They even think it, even in the four man, could be extremely powerful as well into the later half of the game with that 16 talent tier, as you mentioned. So there are a lot of really good assets for both teams here. The poke damage out from Ari and the Yip Bosses is going to be, I think, frustrating to deal with. But at the same time, Lee Ming resets, a new Brack dive, Dahaka, you know, into that back line. We're gonna see here if they can if they can really get into that in this game number two here between Macro Trash and Ari and the Yip Bosses. On the left we'll have Macro Trash with Stu Manchu on the Anubrak. Frank Duke's gonna be on that Dahaka. Spurback gonna be on the Deckard Kane. Hedgy gonna be on the uh, Tracer and Grim going to round it out on the Lee Meng. And once again, Ari and the Yip Bosses on the red side. We do have Arya sporting the Malfurion once again. Twa on the Johanna. Yip Boss playing Hanzo. Motri on the Jaina. And Argi on the Thrall. And once again, Echo the Elements. Not going to be Crash Lightning. I had a, I, like, I saw Jesus. I didn't see the green Jesus. And I was just like, oh no, are we in West? No, we're on, we're on Central. We're on Central. And they're even, they're even making fun of us here. All right. Uh, <laughs> But all right, let's go ahead and uh, let's get into this as the mid lane is going to be met by both teams. Hope damage so, out and yeah. Spell armor on both Dahaka and Anubrak. We're not going to see enhanced agility. Bruiser, or sorry, Anubrak diving in. The scroll ceiling coming out, getting two quick stacks for Deckard. Um, like I said in our earlier division C game, that scroll of identify at level one. After hitting 20 heroes, the snare will reveal people for 16 seconds as well as lower their armor for four. That is going to be a very big deal for these fights on um, towards the bottom shrines. And that, that is actually true, especially in a lot of these pinch points as we do have Stu Manchu diving in on Yip Boss at this time. A lot of damage is going to be going out from Tracer, and that is going to be the first kill of the game going over to Macro Trash, and they also deny all the stacks that are currently sitting on Hanzo's Redemption. That's, now, that's, you've that's watched a big really closely... There was a delay on Blink there, but it didn't matter. <laughs> Hedgy still got the kill. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, there's a tracer in game. I said it was going to happen. You, you, did, you did. Like, you warned me and everything, and I still wasn't prepared. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, though, we do have Stu Manchu going into uh, Mokri here. And uh, overall, I mean, it's just going to be lane matchups. The one thing I do want to know is that Argy in this top lane on Thrall has been pushing in Frank Jukes. I wouldn't say uh, insanely, you know, far because they haven't taken any damage up there. But actually, excuse me, there is going to be a little bit of a brawl breaking out over this camp in the bottom left position as that will be Arya taking a lot of damage from Hedgy. That will be Malfurion getting popped here. Camp going to be picked up, but Lee Ming going to be falling in response. They also get that kill into that Jaina as it looks like it might be Yip Boss. That is going to be <laughs> Yip Boss falling to Hedgy as well. Not going to be getting the stick. <laughs> oh, man. That was absolutely phenomenal play by the side of Macro Trash. The Diaka came in at the perfect opportunity to grab Motri from that push, and Hedgy just cleaning up. Even took Parting Gift. Gonna go probably for those long distance, full health, uh, bomb into Parting Gift kills. So, um, really, really excellent gameplay by them. Magic Missile build actually out of Lee Ming. Not gonna see dominance for the level 4 talent. That's actually, a little, yeah, that's a little interesting. Uh, we do have the first altar popping up here in just a second here. Actually, the altar phase is we do have Yip Boss jumping onto this camp. We don't have any of the serrated arrows or anything, so not going to have that crazy burn that we typically get, but that will be camp going to be grabbed over eventually as this uh, first altar phase will be popping up. And it looks like they're positioning themselves for uh, to hawk in the top and Macro Trash to put all their assets in the bottom. We'll see how our and the Yip Bosses respond to this. Yeah, and Hedgy does have a Pulse Bomb available to him. Um, is going to look to try and pick someone off. Yip Boss trying to get the poke out. 
not able to quite hit her. Um, she is coming on. Arya actually going very low. The Roger Cube going down. Bomb is still available. Going to go ahead and put it on the bow tree. Frank Jukes going to do a ton of damage. Going to fall. Twa is actually being blocked by the Hedgy. Doing a ton of damage. Li Ming trying to get the reset on her. No bomb available just quite yet. Two for none. And that is going to be a two shrine capture for the side of Macro Trash. And the other thing, too, is that they managed to also get down to this bottom lane quick enough to get the clear onto the Sapper Camp, so they're not going to take any structural damage in this bottom lane. That's that's big for the team. I mean, bottom lane is a huge... is very, very important on this map. Um, one of the things that you can get from it is, one, feeding in the Pumpkin Sappers throughout the game. The other thing, too, is just holding that over, and if there is the next Altar Phase, which will be in the bottom and mid position, you do have a little bit of lane advantage for some of the members rotating in as they tried to get the uh, the dive onto a couple members there, but it did not work out. Seven to six, though, level-wise. Meanwhile, though, top lane going to get pushed in. And I also just really quickly want to note that Argy, right before that last altar phase, finished Echoed Elements already, like sub four minutes into this game, already finishing Echo of the Elements. So a big buff on the side of Ari and the It Bosses. Uh, really interesting. We are going to see the Emerald Herodric Cube out of Deckard, not the Ruby. Um, going to go for the reduced healing anytime he hits people with his Roderick Cube. That'll be very important to prevent the Thrall self-sustain, the Johanna self-sustain, um, as well as the Malfurion healing. So, really going to him. Kind of deterring them from going Tranquility, kind of forcing them to go Twilight Dream, because if they go Twilight and they all stack up, 75% reduction on healing, that's going to be disaster. That's going to be almost a whole entire ultimate nullified. That is that is a big thing for a team to have, especially in in these long prolo these prolonged team fights, and just having that 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 healing reduction is a massive tool for teams. A lot of posturing around this mid altar, no one really setting up for bottoms. That looks like Joanna is going to be going ahead and going down there. They're going to need to dedicate an asset on the side of Macro Trash just to delay that out, as they also do need someone to to collect the mid lane position. Yeah, and, and split. having a lot of trouble stepping forward. Spurback actually going to get hit by the the sensor arrow. I'm um, going to get interrupted. He's going to get the channel off. Frank Jukes is down here right now. Uh, Unstoppable coming out on Johanna. The Roots coming out onto the Dahaka, taking a lot of damage. Burrow is down, but that is his armor being shredded. The Scroll Ceiling going to come out, going to hit the Hanzo, going to get the reset. Lee Ming going in. Hedgy trying to do some more damage. That is a one for one trade. The Anubrak going to get rooted, going to fall down. Excellent combo. The Scroll Ceiling coming out, not going to hit anybody. That is a two for one in favor of Yip Bosses, but it is still a Li Ming poking on on here. Mot Motri fallen very low, just body blocking for the Arya. Gonna go ahead and get the turn in. Um, trading one for one. Really good, really, really good roots from Argy right after the Burrow, right after uh, the Condemn from the Johanna to finish off the Nibrak. Um, really making good use of his talent, his abilities. I, I gotta say, like, this is this is some interesting play. Like it was it was really really strong on the side of uh, Macro Trash, but they're starting to get some momentum behind. I guess you can say they can get some, they're getting some wind beneath their sails on the side of uh, uh, Arya and the Ipposes as they they are starting to just get a little bit more lane control, pushing in this bottom, also working towards their ten themselves. But we do actually have this is the one thing I, I pulse rounds from the tracer. Typically we see like quantum spike is the the typical I see from a lot of tracers, but. We're going to be having that that extra charge rate. Uh, we do have the uh, web wrap out from the Anubrak. We have Dahaka with the uh, adaptation. And uh, stay a while and listen. No Lord Nato from the Deckard Kane. So Spurback going to be taking that 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 team sleep. We'll see how they utilize that here as they are going to be going in onto a couple of members. It's going to be Skevin the Slow and a Yip Boss the Stun as well. They're getting so much damage. Deckard Kane going to go ahead and get the the smack with the root. They get the they get the entomb not the entomb web wrap onto the Malfurion, but that will be. Not enough as they actually get the stun. The silence will be coming out. That is going to be Arya falling. Another reset for Grim here. Huge play for the members of Macro Trash. Yeah, and Li Ming actually did go full missile build. Seeker even included. And if you are going to play a poke oriented Li Ming, I actually prefer this one. Ratchet Key coming out. The scroll of ceiling coming out. Twat. Oh, barely steps out of it. Hedgy trying to get that kill. Not willing to step too far past the tower. Um, her pulse bomb, I believe, is back. On, off, no, it is off. I can't really think my spectator is bugged. It's not. It looks like it's off. Pulled out to me. Which one? The pu the pulse uh, bomb. Pulse bomb. Yes, it just it just got charged back up. The charge rate was uh, it's increased 100 percent if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Range and rate is yeah it's and, and so it's into hero so definitely gonna be 
getting that right back up so quickly. Now, the bottom altar was already grabbed by the members of Macrotress, so at this point, it's 34, 32 to 24, but this is Towers of Doom. Dunk, like, anything can happen on this map. I've seen 1 to 24 games just absolutely go south, as that will be a global arrow all the way up to Frank Jukes, as Argy going to be pushing in, trying to get this kill, actually, onto the Dahaka. Yeah, Dahaka actually has no more regen, has no adaptation. Argy is actually very tanky, <laughs> even throwing his Q on the mini wave just to get some cheeky stacks. Um, really nice arrow, though, really enabling him to get that kill because setting him up. I was uh, just like, I was okay. just like, where's this arrow going? But oh my dear lord, the blow up. Trying to get, oh, that will be the web wrap. I don't think this that team actually be could out. be a fatal mistake. Twat is here to help protect him. Um, no, the seal coming out, the bomb almost instantaneous. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, that is one to Jaina. <laughs> that is, I was just like, I was like, wait. Because I, I was actually like, at, for a second, I was just like, they could actually rotate up here and protect it, but not going to be happening. Is Stu Manchu going to be scouting out this camp? They do know that he is there, so that it looks like they're actually going to be rotating over themselves, leaving their own camp. Well, actually going to be just backing off at this time. They don't want to take this fight. It's 13 to 12. The other thing, too, is that they are down that one member, Jaina, not being up at this time and just having the Argy, er, the Argy and the Frank Jukes up in this top lane, which Argy actually pushing into Frank Jukes quite hard here, almost getting the kill. Yeah, Argy has that Ancestral Wrath talent at, at 7, which is very disastrous for a tank. It does a lot of damage. On top of him having the basic ta basic cooldowns re resetting when he gets his passive off. Um, they are going to clear out this bottom sappers without letting them get into the tower. Uh, bottom sappers are going to be captured on the left side for macro trash. Grim doing what he can. The scroll ceiling coming out. Ice block actually going to dodge it. That is a web wrap on a Jada. Interrupting the Twilight Dream. Stay a while and listen. Stopping the Hanzo. Make him take a lot of damage. Grim doing a lot of damage. Malkyrie is dead. Motri is stuck here. Trying to do what he can. Actually almost resetting. Stu Manchu very low. Yip Boss going to finish off. Leeming did fall in the background to Argy. He's doing a ton of damage to the backline. Hedgy trying to get his old back off cooldown. Doing a ton of damage. Gonna chase him down. Frank Jukes the stun. That will be a dead thrall. Four for two, and they get the trap. Excellent play by Macro Trash. Macro Trash played that extremely well, getting a couple kills they definitely needed. Losing a couple themselves, but Overall, Frank Duke's going right back into that top lane, continuing to soak. They get, they got the three sappers down into bottom lane. Z Yet Boss wasn't quick enough to, or wasn't able to get the clear onto that quick enough, as it looks like Spurback and Hedgy will just be scouting out these rotations and gonna get scouted out themselves. As it looks like we do have uh, Twa and uh, Mokri, Motri back at this time. Yeah, and I love how Hedgy's posting up forward like this. Yet Boss gonna go ahead and get slowed. Nowhere to go. That Haradric cube setting it up perfectly. That is one dead Hanzo. Getting just thrown across the map there as it looks like they are going to be having to rotate Twa down into this bottom lane. They want to push into this keep as, or excuse me, this fort, as we mentioned, the Haraja crew coming out. That will also be the web wrap onto the Joanna. They're going to they actually, they're going to go ahead and take this fort while it's just like, all right, well, she's in the web wrap. All right, let's turn around now as they go ahead and they're going to turn onto them. But this does offer them a little bit of time to get down here. They don't get the scroll sealing, no follow up chase, but they got the fort and that's huge for the members of Macro Trash. Yeah, no, definitely making it so Johanna couldn't, like, blind them on top of the fort and possibly setting up kill. The Burrow coming in, the Bomb coming in, Hanzo Arrow actually going to finish off the Tracer. That is one great pickup for the side of our hit bosses. Every kill they take down while down XP gives them bonus XP. That is the underdog bonus um, in work. Uh, 6.5, no comeback, comeback mechanics. <laughs> Absolutely, but the thing I want to note... And you, you already kind of said it. I mean, they are, they're getting those kills. They're getting the experience. It's 16 to 15. Still getting pushed back a little bit here. We have uh, Frank Jukes going ahead and grabbing that uh, top left altar as it looks like uh, Spurbeck is going to go ahead and grab the bottom. Argy going to go ahead and grab the right side. So that will be at least three shots uh, going over to the side of Macro Trash and denying five more on their own core. 15 to 29 as it looks like, I was going to say, it looks like they go ahead and start these siege camps, but... Uh, yeah, that's actually what they're going to be doing. So this is actually a huge talent here for both teams. We have the Fireflies coming out of Li Ming and the increased damage for Skull Ceiling if it hits two people. But we now have Piercing Arrows, a root on Jaina, and Thunderstorm for Thrall. He's been absolutely monstrous with his Echo of the Elements. Now with him being able to stack that up and get more damage on it, and being able to use it twice, that increased slow will do 
a lot of work to control these fights for his team. I gotta say, like, this is this is these talents as we're getting into the later half game here. They're actually gonna be trying to take advantage of the fact that Thrall is in that top position. They're gonna start this fight down in bottom lane. We do see Argy rotating down. Arya gonna be in the uh, cocoon at this time. Hanzo Air gonna be coming out on the spur back. They have the Sapper Camp pushing bottom as Twa is gonna go ahead, rotate down here. We do have Frank Jukes coming down with the Burrow as well. So this is a full 5v5 trying to get these Sappers to push into bottom, but they just back off at this time. They're gonna go ahead and they pulled the assets down to this bottom lane. That was a huge, uh, I would say rotational advantage for the members of Macro Trash because they were able to just force them out of their lanes, not letting them get any more stacking and pushing here as Yipos is going to be taking so much damage. That will be the Hanzo falling at this time. A lot of damage coming out. The Sleep going to be coming out as well. The, the Thrall going to be using the Earthquake. That is going to be two members falling as Twa is going to be trying to pull them in with the Condemn, but that will be the Joanna falling as well. Stay a while and listen completely interrupted Malfurion going into a Twilight Dream and an Ice Block. You'd think setting it up and trying to get like perfect setup with it is absolutely, but using it as a micro interrupt right there is absolutely disastrous. Excellent use of that ultimate from the side of Macro Trash. They are going to go ahead and, whoa, WebRap coming out. Jaina actually falling very low, found very far behind. Actually going to try to do too much too, but although will get deleted. <laughs> That is the Fireflies with the Seeker. So easy to pinpoint. Boss is available. Brawl is dead. Malfurion's up. Still 10 more seconds to the Johanna. The arrow going to go in. Not going to hit every single member. Unfortunately, they're not grouped up. There will be Boss going down. Game number two going to Macro Trash. Hedgy, what a monster. Just crushing it. 10, 11, and 1. One more kill just to finish it off. Even killing Motri on Jaina.